Hey traders, uh, evening video here. Uh, I've been working this week, so I haven't been around. I'm just sitting here doing my charts, trying to figure out what's going on in the markets. Uh, basically, I'm looking at the markets here, and we had that end of day selling pressure. And I think it's a deliberate manipulation to uh, screw over the option holders for tomorrow. So I am looking for a down open for tomorrow. Uh, this is my primary uptrend, which has been holding for a couple weeks now. I, I can go out in time here in a second. Uh, bottom line is, uh, I'm thinking we're going to be coming down here to the 3650 area. Uh, you know, at the very least, testing that. Now, if we break that, then it gets really fun. So, uh, my next level would be the 3610 area and possibly even the 3580 area if that were to happen on some sort of uh, uh, liquidation break of some sort. But, um, Basically, everybody seems to be happy as can be at these prices in the market. Uh, the main theory that I have for tomorrow, a down open. If you go over here to uh, uh, your spies. Okay. And basically what I'm looking at is this uh, uh, wait a minute here. This, this is uh, The open interest, yeah. Um, go ahead, just find her. One second here. So basically, what I think they're doing here is crushing these 370s, uh, the 370 strike. That's 3,700 basically on the S&P's, SPX. And uh, you got 150,000 open interest coming in today. And uh, they are crushing these options big time. And I'll show you here in just a second. As you can see here, uh, the lowest price you've had on these is around uh, the closing price here, the 27 cent mark on these options that expire tomorrow. And bottom line is they, they are been going hog wild. As you can see, these options, they've just been getting smashed, smash, smash. 150,000 of these options for the $3,700 mark. So they are crushing these options big time uh, going into tomorrow, uh, mainly. Uh, <clears throat> so that is one theory I think that they were doing into the close here. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, they may have the prices low enough and then it might take off to the moon. I don't know, but that's just something I'm looking at here, why we had the end of day sell off mainly. It was kind of driven by the Pfizer news, but I do think they're still trying to crush those options and uh, get them down as cheap as they can as a uh, basically on my trends here let me show you here so basically we are a hair's breadth away from 3700 and i think we're going to finish the week off them uh at least tagging or by fat going past the 3700 and uh all that was at the end of the day was an opportunity to buy into some of those options for the long side possibly uh, on the cheap. Uh, that's how those market makers like to manipulate things. But like I said, uh, I got two scenarios, the bullish and the bearish. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Looks like they've really sucked those options dry already, so uh, I'm not going to overly pronounce the uh, bearish case. But uh, what we have been doing when we've been coming in to the day at below this trend line, a lot of times, you know, we can get that sell off here but as you can see and at the end of the day very strong wicks uh with wiki action um uh, into the close they're trying to support price they're still trying to get that 3700 mark as of close so just remember that uh going forward here in my opinion okay uh i like using the fib fans uh this is the acceleration zone this is the consolidation zone on the FIB fans. And if we break that, then that's a potential trend reversal on our FIB fans. So uh, basically, we went from the uh, uh, acceleration zone, and as soon as we crossed out of it, you see that real quick sell-off? That happens quite often in, as you're transferring into a consolidation zone, in my opinion. And uh, so basically, we're coming into tomorrow at this price level, and we potentially could be breaking away from consolidation 
into the open. So we, we literally do need to gap higher uh, into uh, tomorrow's uh, morning action, in my opinion, to save the uh, potentially save the trend here. So that is a potential bearish case based on just using the Fib fans. Uh, the Russell is just amazing here. Just holding out just like a champ here. Just every little dip keeps getting bought. I, I just am amazing, amazing the strength in here. But basically, uh, like I said, though, uh, we are literally still in the acceleration, uh, uh, acceleration phase, believe it or not. Uh, so, uh, it's not something to overly, uh, we're right there between acceleration to accumulation. So, it's hard to say which way we're going to go here, but um, basically a very strong chart. Okay, some sectors that I'm thinking about here is that's financials. We did get a wick today, or a uh, doji today up here at this range highs. And as you can see on our daily uh, time frame, we are well above our uh, value area using volume profile theory. And I also want to go out on a weekly. Uh, is it weekly? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, the weekly. On our weekly, here's what's really important to note. We are right smack dab touching the top of value area high here on our financials. So I do want to point that out, that this has acted as a resistance zone uh, in the past. And the fact that we are getting uh, doji today, that is a little bit... Uh, alarming knowing that we do have a value area high potential uh, reversal zone for our financials. Okay, also we're dojing out on our transports up here. As you can see on our weekly fan point, you know, we're getting a little lofty up here. The volume profile, you know, how, how you have your, uh, we're getting extended on our volume profile outside of weekly value. Uh, on our volume profile. Now, if you go down to the daily time frame, it's a little bit more telling here. We're right smack dab tacking value value area high on our transports as well. So, you know, uh, just something to definitely keep on watch. We are at a critical resistance area on both financials and our transports, in my opinion. Um, more so our financials, but uh, something to definitely be aware of. XBI, this also has a major impact on our Russell. Uh, these are the biotechs and, uh, and our NASDAQ, of course, but our Russell has a lot of small biotechs uh, inside of it. So we're well outside of our range, but I do want to point out here that we found rejection in the past when we get up here into this range and we're coming into our trend line and everything outside of value, okay? And so a very, if we were to fall, there's no support here, okay? Your next real support is way down here at, you know, you know, you're looking at 110 area for some sort of support on the uh, XBI. Very dangerous uh, area if monies were to start coming out of the sector. If you go out in a weekly time frame, it gets a little bit more telling. Look how parabolic our uh, financials or our biotechs currently are because of the whole COVID thing. Look at just how elongated and parabolic this really looks like a toppy pattern here in our biotechs. Uh, buying into this whole hype of the whole COVID-19 cure for everything. And I think they're just completely, totally nuts on the uh, expectations, um, you know, uh, the income generation expectations aspect. And Moderna is probably one of those that should be shorted here and not taking to the long side, if in my opinion. Just a few other things here. Uh, I want to say uh, mRNA. Look at that. It's up over 500% this year. You know, look, you know, it's already coming back considerably. Hit that 178 area. It was just nuts. Absolute nuts. You know, look how far above normal valuations it is already. And if you're going to daily, it's even looking worse. You know, uh, very expensive stock at this point. But you never know. So uh, definitely something to keep on watch here. Uh, it's amazing um, the uh, run-up it's had here. 
Oh, I did also want to mention XLU, and that's uh, we had a breakout here on our utilities, and it looks like we're rolling over on our utilities. If that's the case, we could be seeing even more upside potential in the markets. So that's, you know, this is your contrarian indicator. People go to your utilities in times of, uh, for safety. And it looks like we have a, uh, basically setting up for uh, a head, a shoulder head, and possibly breaking down into make creating a right shoulder for our utilities. So definitely a theory out there you need to keep on watch here. But utilities are starting to look, like money might be coming out of the defensive area and going to be added to the stock markets. So then we're also talking about the Uber exuberance. That's also in our uh, consumer discretionary. Uh, definitely something to keep on watch here. This represents our primary uptrend uh, discretionary goods. Okay, we are currently trading. 160% above that on our uh, FIB extensions. So this is our primary our primary uh, volume profile, you know, of what we're typically doing for uh, consumer discretionary. And we're trading, like I said, 160% beyond. So definitely something to be aware of. Uh, be, you know, this is a dangerous time in uh, chasing these um, retail stocks i mean they are they have been priced for perfection another one you really need to be watching here that's your xrt look at how thin the profile gets is getting up here it's th this looks like this just screams short squeeze in my opinion the past two weeks of just very low volume just continues to squeeze it higher and higher and higher and it is just it is screaming trouble here in my opinion um so we'll see what happens here in our retail sector but i'm just saying we are at a critical resistance area that i've drawn out a while back and look at look at how elongated even on the monthly look at this just the explosion higher with record unemployment in this country this is just unreal and if you go into daily um you know it really looks like retail is due for a breather at any moment. So definitely something to think about in your trading and going forward here. Yeah, when you talk about stocks with horrible volume profile uh, support, look at Tesla. You know, I, 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 I just can't stress enough how dangerous it is to try to be pushing Tesla to the upside. So. Uh, good luck if you're trying to swing this one to the long side. Yeah, I see charts like this. This is your primary uptrend. And you see this accelerated move well above the primary uptrend. This typically can lead into a much larger uh, head and shoulders top. So just remember that, what we're going on here. What's indicative of these patterns is forming a head and shoulder, or the head of a head and shoulder. Down here is your shoulder area, or maybe even here. You know, you could have this as your shoulder area, and this could be your head uh, forming here with mo massive move up like this. So just something to be aware of whenever you're seeing volume profile uh, explode like this to the upside. So definitely uh, still thinking, you know, potentially Google's a short uh, based on volume profile theory. So. We'll see what happens here in the markets, but, you know, that's what I'm seeing right here. Uh, the last one I'm going to talk about here, and that is your Boeing. Yeah, finally got approvals, start flying and everything, but we're here right at volume area highs. And what the problem, the issue I have right here, uh, you're going to squeeze, massively squeeze higher at this point if you're going to get uh, a big move higher and uh so we got to see what's going to happen here um typically the buyers and sellers the sellers have come in here at this price point in the past the sellers have come in and uh shorted boeing at this price point 
but we actually need, I think we need some sort of another headline or good earnings to actually take us higher. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, this is not one I would short because it's down so far. Uh, you want to short the stuff at all-time highs. You don't want to be shorting way down here. But this is one that I think is you don't want to be initiating a new long at this point. At this point. So, thanks a lot. Uh, like the video if you like it, and please give me your comments uh, if you can. And uh, basically, uh, I'm leaning bearish only because the charts are uh, extended, but they can be extended a lot longer than my account can stay short. So. Uh, it is what it is, you know. Uh, they're using the derivatives to continue to push price. That means the futures. That's why we're coming in every day and the markets are higher because the futures, they're the very low volume, very little money. They can sit there and manipulate the markets higher and higher and higher until uh, the musical chairs, the ch eventually a bunch of chairs are going to be missing when we come in. Hard to tell when that's going to be, though. So, thanks a lot.